Welcome everybody, I'm John Wally. And today we're gonna to be diving into Tenable OT and how to integrate the platform with Splunk. And so this is gonna be a fairly in-depth video. Uh, so grab a cup of coffee, grab your favorite drink, and let's jump in. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have Splunk set up in a way that we can integrate in uh, the most effective manner possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. And we need to do some very basic pieces when it comes to setting up Tenable OT and Splunk because there's multiple ways that Tenable OT talks with Splunk itself. And really with any sim, but specifically with Splunk. It has the ability to do syslog and forward syslog, and it can do that for events, it can do that for the regular system log in it. But Tenable has a special app just specifically for Splunk. So we're gonna get into the app first, how to set that up, how to get some of our containers and indexes built within Splunk, and then we'll jump over into Tenable OT. So one of the first things we want to do is we wanna start setting up some special indexes. So I'm gonna go over to settings and I'm gonna to go to indexes and I'm gonna add a couple of indexes here just so we can know what we're playing with. So the very first one I'm gonna add in here is just called syslog. And I don't need anything special as far as paths and that sort of stuff. All I really wanna do is have a very special container or index for anything that comes over from my syslog data. I wanna create a second one though called Tenable Events. So I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna say Tenable Events. Maybe I'll capitalize so that we can tell the difference. And I'm gonna save this one. All right, so we have our two indexes and that's the first piece. So let's go in and do some of the basic syslog first and then we'll talk about the application. I think that's probably a better way to do this. So the next thing I want to go into settings is I wanna say, hey, how am I gonna collect data from Tenable OT, for example? So I wanna create a listener. So I'm gonna create a UDP listener. And I'm gonna say add new. I'm gonna put it over UDP. We're gonna do the normal 514 as a port, and we're gonna hit next. When we say what the source type is, we're gonna say that it's syslog. We can say it's for our app browser, that's fine. We'll say it's by IP, and then we created a new index. So we're gonna call this syslog for our index. We're gonna go review and we're gonna submit. So now we're good. We're ready to go do the first connection that we can do on the Tenable OT side. So I'm gonna to go to the Tenable OT security and I'm gonna log in here. I'm gonna to go to my local settings. I'm gonna to go to servers and syslog servers. I'm gonna go and add a server and I'm gonna call this Splunk, and the host name can be your host name or your IP. So I'm gonna put in the IP address for our Splunk server. Our port by default is over 514, and we're gonna say this is over UDP. We can say it's in the test message, and I'm gonna go ahead and create here as well. Now, if I go back over to Splunk and I go to my enterprise here, our little logo at the top, and if I hit search and reporting, what I wanna do is go make sure that I got that test result that's in here. So if I just go and look at the index, so if I say index equals syslog, and we hit return, we should have our test message. We can see that we have our test message here. So I'm gonna go back to my Tenable OT instance, and then I'm gonna go down to system log. And in the system log, you'll see that there's all kinds of different stuff in here, but I can do a drop down at the top right, and now I can select Splunk. So now anything that comes up in our system log will be forwarded. You'll see things like host names and stuff being sent, or the Splunk syslogger servers was created, 
you'll see different API keys and syncs that were done when I was testing preparing for this video. You can even see things if we go in, for example, let's grab some policies and let's turn one off and turn one on. Let's turn another one off and turn another one on. If we go to some events, let's go and do something like resolving these three events. All right, so now we have a few things going on. If we go back over to Splunk, and we update our syslog, we should see all the different things that we were doing there, where it said, hey, we went in and turned a policy on and off, or we went in and did some test stuff, or we went out and cleared some events, and we even put the co capture the comments that it was done for Splunk. So now, in hot side of Splunk, we have the capability of knowing when people are resolving events, when they've been making any changes, when they've updated policies. So we can see all the activities that the administrators or users of Tenable OT are actually doing. So it's given us a way to really kind of monitor Tenable OT itself to make sure that nothing malicious is going on. Or if we have things like policies automatically turning off, now we're gonna be alerted through that and we could actually set up alerting through Splunk, and this isn't gonna be a whole session on Splunk on how you set up a learning, but if you ever wanna learn about that, put it in the comments, I'd be happy to go through the Splunk as well, setting up alerting and dashboards and those kind of things. So now we have basic information in here. We can see anything from our index of syslog, and anytime any kind of event changes, we're gonna be notified and it will come in and be captured within Splunk. Now there's a couple of ways to get event data up to Splunk as well. So if we look at all of these events, if we go to policies and we go, let's just take this first one that's here and I go to say edit and I hit next, it gives me the ability to also send any events that I want to my actual log. And so this is one way that you can push everything up. And this works regardless of the type of SIM you have. It works with QRadar, it works with Splunk, it works with all the different vendors that are out there that can take raw syslog files or syslog forwarders and push that up to the actual um, SIM that you have in place. But because we've already learned how to do this and we already set up syslog boarding, I'm gonna show you another way to do this that's more interactive. It actually gives us better data and better format inside of the Splunk application. So we go back to Splunk. Let's go in and start working with some of the stuff where we can get the tenable application in, in general. So I'm gonna go over to Splunk base if you're not familiar with this, it's just splunkbase.splunk.com, and I'm gonna search on the term tenable. And you'll see this tenable add-on for Splunk. Make sure you don't grab the tenable app for Splunk. I know that they're very similar. So the tenable add-on for Splunk has support for tenable OT. The tenable app for Splunk, while it's great, and it does dashboarding and all kinds of stuff out there, it does not support Tenable OT at this time. So we're gonna to go to the Tenable add-on, not Tenable app, for Splunk, and we're gonna click there. You're gonna log in to your Splunk and actually download. So you'll click download. Now you'll see it's gonna tell us we have to log in. I've already done this so to kind of speed this process up. So I'm gonna to go to Splunk up at the top, go back to my home page. I'm gonna to go to apps and manage and then I'm gonna go in and say, install app from file. I'm gonna choose my file from my downloads, hit open. I'm gonna upgrade my app. I'm gonna check and make sure that if there's anything there, it'll overwrite it. And I'm gonna say upload. It's gonna tell me I need to restart. This will take a little bit. I'll fast forward our video for this portion if we need to. All right, it looks like we're back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in again. and we're gonna go back to our home page. So now we should have the application in place. So I'm gonna to go to hit apps. I'm gonna grab our tenable add-on for Splunk just to make sure that it comes up. 
All right, now we have to do a few modifications before we're gonna be ready to go. So I'm gonna bring up PowerShell. You could do this through some kind of SSH terminal or something like that. I've already done this for ease. I've logged into my Splunk server and we need to make those configuration changes. So the first thing I wanna do is change to my directory where my Splunk is actually installed. So for me, that's under opt Splunk. I'm gonna list directories here so you can see them. The first thing we want to do after getting in this directory is we can go to the Etsy directory. Our apps directory, you can see that here. And you'll see that we have our tenable, TA tenable folder here. So we're gonna switch into that. You'll see a BIM folder And then we're looking for a very specific file. We want this tenable con STS or constance.py. And we're gonna edit this. So we're gonna have to sudo, we're gonna have to have root privileges to do this. So I'm gonna sudo. It's gonna ask us for our password. Oops, it'd help if I put the command in. And what I wanna do is change this setting from verify SSL for OT to false. Otherwise, when we go to create the account, it won't work because we'll be getting certificate errors. So I'm gonna say insert, add false, and save this off. And then I need to restart Splunk. So I'm just gonna to go to settings, server controls, restart Splunk. All right, it looks like we've restarted. We're gonna log back in. And most of our setup is done, so now that we can use a Tenable app. So we wanna go into our manage apps and just make sure that we have everything running. So if we go over to our Tenable app, we'll go over, it looks like it's enabled, and that's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch from here. You can launch from the dropdown as well. And you're gonna see we come up with inputs, configuration, and search. Well, the first thing we need to do is build an account. And this account will reach back to Tenable OT and log into it. So we're gonna to go to add, I'm just gonna call this Tenable OT as an account. From the dropdown, I'm gonna select that I want the Tenable OT. The address that I'm gonna put in is the address of our Tenable OT appliance, which is 10.3.40.100. And then it's gonna ask me for a secret key. So if I go back over to Tenable OT security and I go to my local settings and system configuration, we'll see API keys. I'm gonna generate an IP API key. I'm gonna change it to 365. Call it Splunk, just so I know what it's connecting to, and I'm gonna say generate. I'm gonna copy my key. I'm gonna go back to my configuration for Splunk. I'm gonna paste my key in here, and I'm gonna select add. Perfect. Now we see that we've created the account and everything looks like it went through perfectly. So now let's go to inputs because we got to figure out where we're going to put that data. So we're going to go to create a new input for Tenable OT. We're going to give this a name of Tenable OT. We'll make it the smallest interval that we have of 86. 400. The index we're going to put in here as Tenable Events and our global account that we're going to put in is Tenable OT that we just created and we're going to select Add. All right, so now we have our inputs, we have our user account, now we can start searching. Now, how in the world do we search? 
Well, the first thing we want to do is put in our index. So we can say index tenable OT events. We'll hit enter. All right. And we'll, set, we'll see all the data that we've already picked up inside the tool. Now we can also say some other things. There's some defaults in here. So we can say source. And what you'll see is we have three different options here. We have tenable OT assets, tenable OT plugins, or tenable OT vulns. Now you'll see the same thing down below when we start looking at these as well. But if we, let's go in and say that it's tenable OT assets. This will give us all the data and output all the assets in one kind of output inside the app. So going from assets, the other area that we can look at is plugins. And this is going to give us information directly out of any of the plugins that we've gotten from Tenable as well. So let's go ahead and hit plugins. And you'll see that like what family of plugins, the ID, what it is, what the source is, and any criticality that's tied to that. So not only can we get our data inside the app now that we have this, we can actually go back to our main search. I can put in my index here and say that I want tenable events and can capture all of this data both inside and outside of the app. So now I can start doing dashboarding and that sort of stuff within my visualization on these as well. So anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have any comments, any suggestions, uh, I'm still fairly new on the Splunk side. I am not a Splunk expert other than knowing how to get Tenable OT data in there. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about that, how I can improve on that side. Until next time, have a great day. Take care.